Well, good afternoon, everybody. Uh, obviously, really exciting uh, day on Saturday. Uh, got the guys together uh, for the first time yesterday and kind of reviewed and talked about the game, um, a lot of the positive things, and talked about some of the things we need to continue to improve upon. Uh, and then uh, we really flipped the page pretty quickly because um, we've got a, a big game this week uh, against KU, and uh, they're playing really well uh, and with a lot of confidence. And uh, I thought our guys had a really good practice yesterday. It was our first workout. and. Um, since the game and, and uh, you know we got through the game relatively good from a health standpoint rather than other than Eric Gallon who will be lost for the season with a knee injury it was unfortunate that uh, we lost Eric because he was uh, playing well and, and increasing his role but uh, um, you know our thoughts are with uh, Eric moving forward so uh, we'll open up for questions as we can about KU and stuff. It, it seems like this team so far has done a good job about adhering to the what you call the yeah. process. Do you find yourself even more adamant this week about making sure they're attacking each day, coming off a big win and heading to the big rivalry game? Or do you find yourself thinking, hey, after seven games, this team is better matured and the process is now ingrained in them? Well, you hope that that the process is beginning to be ingrained in those guys, uh, but you're always reminding them uh, about why we've we have success, and um, I think success is 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 just defined by each day, just getting better and not worrying about Saturday. We can't worry about Saturday uh, today or or on Thursday. We got to handle it each day, and that's that's kind of been the whole message uh, throughout the entire season, even when we had. A couple of a couple of losses in a row. I felt we were improving as a football team, and that's all you can ask for is just continuing to get better on a daily basis. As it as pertains to Saturday, just what is the magnitude of this game that that you know of at this particular point in time? I know it's a big game. Uh, obviously, you know, with the Governor's Cup and, and um, the trophy game and those things, and I think those things are, are, are neat. Part of college football, the rivalries, I think those are great. Um, but once again, I, we can't get caught up in all that. We, we, get, we have to get caught up in uh, making sure that we come up with great game plans uh, this week and that the guys uh, understand the details of the plan and, and don't get ahead of ourselves and, and make sure that we have a great week of prep. How much can a rivalry game like this, especially a team that's in state that you're competing for recruits against, have on recruiting? With, with well, way yeah, I think, you know, all of our games in the Big 12 because of uh, proximity with all the recruiting areas have an impact without question. And, and uh, uh, this is this one's really no different. I mean, there's there's they recruit a lot of the same areas, whether it's local or, or out of state as we do. And, and so, um, yeah, every every week it's it's impactful. I know you mentioned got out of the game relatively healthy. Is Jordan Brown doing OK? Yeah, uh, he didn't practice yesterday. Um, but we envision him practicing some today and, and should be ready to roll full speed probably Wednesday. In preparing for Kansas's offense, do you really lock in on those two or three games that Brent Deerman's been calling plays and kind of set aside the other ones to a degree? Well, I don't think you set them totally aside. I Yes, you have to see how it's different, call, differently called in those last two games without question. But they've also had a lot of the same formations, probably a lot of the same terminology for a number of weeks. Um, and so we have to look at the whole body and then uh, maybe focus in, you know, Scotty Wood, maybe just on how it's called. Maybe it's a little different. Um, you know, we're just kind of digging into that. I, I know this, the, the level of confidence that those guys are playing with, uh, obviously, um, um, they bought in quickly and uh, to the change, and, and uh, I think you know the quarterback and, and, and Stanley and all the skill kids are playing really, really well and playing with a lot of confidence. Have you seen an offense like this this season? Probably not. You know, probably not. Everybody's unique in their own way of the offenses that we've played. There's a lot of, everybody knows there's tremendous offenses in this league. Uh, I, I think KU's just really solid in their balance right now. Um, you know, and, and they get into a lot more personnel groups than a lot of the Big 12 teams that we've played so far. I mean, they can pack it in with a couple of tight ends and, um, and, and a couple of wide receivers, or they can spread you out in four wide. And, and uh, obviously, the running back can do so many things in and out of the backfield and they hand him jet sweeps and stuff so um, they just and I, and I know they're they're continuing to put more of their offense in and uh, so I think we'll see some some 
some unique things or different things that we haven't seen uh, so far this year. But uh, uh, really impressed with their with their offense right now. When you were uh, in Fargo, what was your approach yearly to your? Uh, Rivalry game with South Dakota. Well, the kids knew about them. You know, the players did. That's the biggest thing. Um, but you always try to focus on that game, uh, the next one on the schedule. And it, if it's the rivalry game, great. If it's the next one, because i am also uh, been told by a, a number of people, and, and I'll give you the name, Gus Bradley, you know, because Gus played at North Dakota State, and uh, Gus has, has been a longtime coach in the NFL. He always told me, don't put too, met, too much emphasis on one game, because what are you going to do the other 10 weeks of the year? or 11 weeks of the year, or for him, 15 or 16. And so, um, you know, it is important. I'm not downplaying that, but you better just attack each day and attack uh, what we have in front of us, which is to try to learn the game plan this each day. This season, you've been good at limiting turnovers. You had no turnovers against Oklahoma. Um, just where does that fit in the equation as far as the things that are important to your success? Yeah. Um, you know, turnovers are, are obviously really important, and we've been fortunate that uh, Skyler's done a really good job of taking care of the football. Uh, explosive plays are another uh, big factor. Uh, we were a little bit more even this past week, even though Oklahoma had a number of explosive plays. We had a number of them ourselves. And then the field position, time of possession game, it's still, it, to a lot of people, it's not important. To our offense, it is because of us methodically moving the football down and being able to run the football to a degree of success because it takes time off the clock and keeps a, a, a prolific offense off the field. Is there anything about the last two weeks, timing of the season, anything like that, that has allowed Skyler to, in some ways, come into his own here within the offense? Um, just comfort level, uh, you know, continuing to learn more about the offense, continuing to have conversations with Coach Mess and Coach Klein about the things that they're seeing, the things that he's seen. I've asked him to have more input on the things that he's watching during the week of things that he really likes because uh, Mess is, is really good about, hey, I want to know what you would like on third and medium. I'd like to know what you like uh, on a first and ten um, in the play action game. What are things that you see because you're out there. You're the one that's that's uh, um, going through it on a on a on a play by play basis, and so I just think he's continuing to get more comfortable. And we're talking, you know, seven games into this tenure that he has for in our offense. Can you give me your first impression of him? What, what it was about him that made you think you guys could work so well together? Uh, one, he's a great competitor, um, and he wants to be he wants to be great. He he <laughs> wants to be challenged, and um, um, he's a football junkie. He he loves the 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 nuances, the X's and O's, and and those things. And he and he works he works extremely hard at his craft, whether that's mental or physical. He works extremely hard, and and I'm glad that uh, it paid off for him on Saturday. And and I know that he feels he can continue to get better. You averaged five and a half plays or yards per play on first downs that weren't scoring plays. Mm -hmm. What was the key to getting getting shorter uh, second and third downs? And what's been the key to keys? Uh, finding a rhythm in your offense. Yeah, running the football uh, obviously is the big key, and uh, us not having negative plays. We didn't have as many, you know, minus two, minus three plays where you get into a second and in, in, in extra long, or you have a good play on second down, and all of a sudden you have a poor play, and then you're back to third and long. We were we were pretty good on third and, and medium to long last week, uh, and that's a, a testament to, to Skyler seeing the field so well. But uh, you know, we were able to open up some things in the passing. game game simply because we were able to rush the football and that's that's paramount to our success in the offense we're running whether it's inside run which we were able to pop a few as well as the perimeter run this may be tricky to answer off the top of your head but do you have one or two position coaches you think have asked their position group to do something incredibly different than the previous staff that they've done really well with uh, no idea from the previous staff, uh, but uh, all of our guys, we talk all the time on, on Sundays when we come back in after a win or after a loss, you know, what more can we get out of each position? We kind of go around the room of who's, whose guys played really well, whose guys are, are coming along that are understanding our schemes better, who's playing faster. That's the thing that we kept harping on this week is 
we're learning more about the systems. And, and is it perfect? No, it's not. It's a long ways away, but we're playing faster. And I thought that's what I, I've seen uh, big picture over the last uh, three weeks is we're playing faster, uh, not only at practice, but now it's translating over to some Saturdays too. When you were able to get around the team yesterday, did you did you sense they had already gotten the focus they needed to, or did you have to remind them, hey guys, that, that wins in the past? Uh, a little bit of both. Uh, we had a meeting with the captains, and um, they were they were moved on. It was a, it was a great great victory, but they were moved on. And then I know that they uh, echoed a lot of that in the locker room. Uh, we we always have a team meeting on Monday. They go through some of our awards, and then flip the page and say, okay, here's here's this week's goals uh, and objectives of what we need to do to be successful, and now let's go execute on Monday. Let's let's learn the small details on Monday so that uh, we can hone in Tuesday, Wednesday, and Thursday. And, and like I said, I thought we had a really focused group out there yesterday. Uh, probably helped that it was some snow in the air and it was uh, a cool night, but it wasn't windy, so it was actually pretty pleasant out there. Some of the guys probably hadn't seen snow. I don't think Josh Youngblood had seen, seen much snow before in the past uh, but it was it was a it was a good practice and the guys you know focused on the new game plan because each week we have to come up with some new things offensively and defensively to, to uh, give ourselves a chance to be successful and, and we heard repeatedly from offensive linemen during that two game losing streak how frustrated they were with how they were playing do you sense that the last Saturday is that maybe a turning point you know um, I, I hope so. I know there, we have a lot of good football players there. You guys know we have a lot of good football players there. But I also caution our guys, just like I do every week, it doesn't matter, is what you did in a previous game has no bearing on the next game. And you can't compare scores and you can't say, well, we ran the football well this week. That means we're going to next week. It doesn't work that way. This game's too hard. There's too good of coaches. There's too good of players. Each week is a brand new week in this league. Just throughout your career, have your paths crossed much with Les Miles? Do you have any kind of relationship? None other than when he was hired at KU and I was hired here. Uh, we had a couple of uh, interactions at some different functions that we were at and, and uh, had good conversations, although quick, had good conversations. Obviously, have tons of respect uh, for, for Les in the profession and, and his longevity and how well he's done and, and the sustained success. And uh, I think all of us can see uh, what he what he's done in a short period of time at the University of Kansas has been really, really productive and really good. I want to ask you again about Carter Scanton. Stanley he comes off a pair of 300-yard passing games and has Kansas on pace for its second most passing yards in the past decade. What makes him such an effective passer? One, he's got a grasp of the offense, and you can tell even over the last few weeks, it, it really his. It, He's understood a lot of things really well, and the ball comes out on time. Uh, I've seen Texas try to pressure him, and he knows where he's going with the football, and the pressure doesn't get there because he knows how to get the ball out. Uh, he sees coverages really well. Uh, he sees matchups really well. I think he throws the deep ball extremely well. I mean, we've seen that against a lot of people where there's people right on guys, and, and they're electric at wide receiver now. They have some great players at wide receiver, and it's not just, well, you have to stop one guy. There's a bunch of guys that can beat you at wide receiver, uh, and he's he's distributing the ball to all of them. And uh, I just, you know, as you, as you watch him, especially early in the season, and then as it's come on late in the season, I think he's got a real good connection with a number of guys at receiver, and he's throwing the ball really well. Uh, what is stood out to you about Jax Demean, and what does a game like this mean for him? He came from a family that's heavily involved. Yep. Uh, we were happy to get Jax in the recruiting process, and, and um, you know, we thought he had a chance to help us as a true freshman, and uh, he's done a nice job. He played a little bit more last week, and we continue to get him more and more involved in the in the plan. I know that was probably not easy for the Deneen family to see somebody go to Manhattan, uh, but in the same respect, Jack loves it. Jax loves it here, and, and he's a great fit here, and he's got a lot of good buddies here, and uh, he's embraced being a Wildcat, and he loves being a Wildcat, and I'm, I'm excited to see him not only this week, but as he continues on in his career. Is Moraney, number 97, the, the most disruptive player you've seen in KU's front seven? Well, they have a bunch of them. I, I like their their front seven. Um, they have uh, a bunch of veterans in, in the defensive line, and uh, they're long. They're really athletic. Um, they cover ground. They're, they're strong. They get off blocks. And, and uh, you know, for us to, to focus on one guy, I think they've got a bunch of guys that are really good up there. 
Coach Kellis asked you about uh, first impressions of Skyler, and maybe this is a cop out, but I guess I'll ask you the same thing about Coach Mess, uh, and I guess how pleased you've been with with sort of his progression since. Uh, well, I you didn't realize I've been around Mess my whole life, and and um, and just love the guy because he's a competitor and, and he's a great play caller. I, I I've seen it not just in the last three years, but I've followed his career when I wasn't with him, uh, and um, he, he doesn't he, he doesn't ride the roller coaster, and um, he he has a plan and he sticks to the plan he's he's really good in the staff room because he wants input from all coaches and not a lot of guys you know will really take that sometimes they ask for the input but we really really use it um, and, and Courtney I was obviously really happy for mess because uh, once we had some things going in the run game uh, it's a lot easier to call plays and um, if you can run the football um, it opens a lot of things up and if you struggle to run the football a lot of people can call it and it just doesn't work if you can't if you can't find a way to get the run game going. Does Cleet Duke in some respects step into that? Yeah, yeah we we have to look at that uh, and see. That was a, a, a significant role based on trying to find a guy that we could spy Jalen Hurts and uh, whether it was Eric or, or Khalid, they both played a little bit until um, Khalid got hurt. But uh, I think each week will be a little bit different. Um, we're not to the third down stuff yet with our game planning, so we'll see how that goes as the week goes on. you find yourself placing any extra emphasis on special teams given how good they've gone the last couple of weeks? I think you always have to place great emphasis on special teams. It's the same thing with, you know, anything else. You can't put too much emphasis on it one week. You better have a, a sustained amount of, of um, excellence on teams. And, uh, you know, I think, and you know, in in all of our wins, special teams have been a big, big factor. Um, you know, this past week we get the we get the fumble recovery uh, on the pooch kick. Uh, Devin Anktil has a couple of big time punts again. Uh, Blake was on point, and uh, we made some tackles against uh, a great returner. And uh, this week's no different. We have to be able to flip the field position um, with our uh, kicker and punter. And then we we need to find a way to make an explosive return, uh, explosive play and returns, especially uh, you know to get a short field for our offense. I think that's critical. Is there anything specific about y'all's three running back formation, the inverted wishbone, that just seems to fit this offense? <laughs> always has been a part of, of <clears throat> this offense, dating back to our time at NDSU. Uh, and it's obviously more effective when we had Jordan, because now you have Jordan, James, and, uh, and Harry uh, that are, are experienced older guys. And um, when you can have three tailbacks back there, you don't know which way it's going. And uh, we're scratching the surface on a lot of things that we, we can do out of that formation. And does it mean it's a big part of this game plan? I, I don't know. Uh, I'll have to talk to Coach Mess uh, on Thursday, but it's just uh, we, we look at things and see if it's a fit. Uh, and if it is, we'll, we'll roll some things out with it. If it's not, you know, you have, we haven't seen it every week. We've only seen it some weeks. And part of that obviously has been with uh, the injury factor to Jordan. Following up on that, uh, I guess it's been since week two was the last time Harry had more than five carries in the game, but he seemed to have a couple of incredible blocks out of the yeah. to, to get big runs you bet. for James and Jordan. Just how impressive are you doing him? Uh, Harry is a team guy and wants to do anything he can to help us win. And um, when Jordan came back, that that was going to limit some of his uh, opportunities. Um, but he didn't care. He just wanted to play and win. And we're trying to incorporate him in a few more special teams because he is a really good football player. But he's a team guy. And that's, that's I told the guys, that's why we won the game. And that's why we're having some success is it's all about – the name on the front of the jersey. It's all about the team. It's all about us embracing the offense, defense, special teams, and our scout team was really good last week. Our offense and defensive scouts gave us a great look, and that's hard to do when you're not in the mix. And uh, I think Harry is a great uh, representation of, hey, if this is my role, I'm going to own the role, I'm going to embrace the role, and I'm going to dominate the role. And so I hope that a lot of the young guys can learn from a Harry Trotter. And, and then after Saturday, when Josh Youngblood said that he just thought that that win is going to be a big deal on the recruiting trail for like kids seeing, hey, you can come to K State and beat the biggest team in the country. Do you really think that's a, a win to pay dividends? Well, I think it's still a body of work. I don't want it to be one game. Obviously, that game was a was a big game and a big win, but it's still your overall body of work. 
keep passing that thing around. <laughs> Uh, did you learn any lessons after the Mississippi State game? You guys come back and lose the next two. Did you use any things? Uh, part of it was a bye week, too, in, in there. Uh, we talked about the rhythm of playing football. Uh, you know, something we visited about with the captains. And, um, you know, do you learn something about that? Do you learn something after losing a couple in a row that you're never as bad as you think you are? You're probably never as good as you think you are either. And once again, it kind of goes back full circle to the first conversation we're having in here. You better attack each day because uh, in, your, in your preparation because if you don't prepare Monday through Friday, you don't have an opportunity to be successful Saturday. When you went back and broke down what happened on defense, what did you like most on that side of the ball against Oklahoma? That we limited them, limited them to field goals. It just, you know, you're not going to stop that offense. That that offense is phenomenal. And for us, I think the third quarter, we had a great third quarter. They only had a couple of possessions and didn't do much in the third quarter. So that was really key. But the other things were, you know, first drive, limiting them to three. A couple other times, limiting them to a field goal. Um, you know, that was that was really important. We're getting, we played better on defense. Uh, we know we have to continue to play better uh, for us to be successful. Um, but I, I, I know the guys are seeing it as they watch film uh, over the last few weeks that we are getting better but we're we still have a long ways to go to get where we want to be on defense all right thanks, thanks. all right thanks guys